Well, hello there, ladies and gents. I'm Tammy Sipnewski, and thank you so much for popping by on the channel for another LumaFusion tutorial. So in this one, I'm gonna teach you guys how to do an RGB glitch effect for your texts or titles. Now, it's gonna be a lot of movement, a lot of work, a lot of keyframing, a lot of back and forth, but the good news is we can save that all as a preset in LumaFusion so that we only have to do it the one time. And of course, I'll show you how to do that too. So let's go ahead and jump into it. Oh, and by the way, for those of you who maybe have never watched one of my videos, Welcome. I like to do all of my tutorials with an overhead camera. I just think it's easier to follow along that way. So if that's the way you like to learn, please consider hitting subscribe and maybe the bell icon if you wanna be notified every time that I drop a new video. And I try to get videos up at least a couple of times a week. All right, enough of me yapping on. Let's go ahead and get right on into it. So obviously step one is going to be to find the video clip that you wanna work with and the exact position where you wanna have that glitch effect come in. So now we're going to grab the plain white title and we're going to drop that down on our timeline. So we're going to double click that title and that's gonna bring us to the properties window. We're going to double click on the title again and this is going to allow us to edit the text, oops, I think using all caps for this is always best. And now we can change the font. And I like to use a thicker font that's italic for this particular glitch effect. I think it just translates better. And also what I wanna do is pull down the opacity of this. So we're gonna bring this down to right around, I think about the mid 60s, that looks good. So let's go ahead to frame and fit. Okay, so let's start at the very beginning. So hit the far most left reverse button. Now I see that this is going to come in at 6.07 seconds. We're going to drop our first keyframe right there. I want to advance it up a little bit, almost to a complete second, and we'll drop our next keyframe because I want people to be able to see what it says before all of that motion and movement starts happening. So what we're going to do now is go to blending. Once we're at blending, we're going to drop a keyframe, advance one frame, and now what I'm going to do is just pull down the opacity a little bit, like say to about 63%. So let's back out of this and just see if it's long enough. Okay, I think that's perfect. So now what I wanna do is make a duplicate of this title. And we do that just by hitting the plus sign right on the bottom of the screen. Okay, so what we're going to do now is to begin to put all of the motion in that title. So we'll double click on that and we're going to go back to frame and fit again. Let's go to the last keyframe and what we wanna do is advance two frames. So now we're going to start with the movement back and forth across the screen. It has to be perfect. It has to move across the screen perfectly. So obviously we're not going to do that with a pencil or a finger because that's, our hands are just too jittery. How we're going to move this perfectly is by sliding it over with the X factor. And we're just going to pull it all the way over to the left hand side, maybe just two of the letters sticking out. Go ahead and advance three frames and pull it on over to the right hand side with just a few letters sticking out. Another three, pull it back over to the left. Another three, pull it on back over to the right. And it doesn't have to be lined up. You don't have to do perfectly where you did on the last side before. You can, as, as a matter of fact, the more random it is, the more glitchier it will appear. Another three frames. We're going to pull it back across the left. Another three frames. Pull it back over to the right. Another three frames. Pull it back over to the left. Now do two frames. And now we're going to pull this slightly past the middle, right about there. Another two, we're gonna pull it right back past halfway again. Another two, and this time we're gonna pull it all the way over to the end again. Just maybe about four and a half 
letters sticking out. Another two, and we're going to drag it just a little bit past zero again until it's a, at about negative three or four. Another two, and we will drag it past the halfway point again, right about to five. Another two, and we're going to drag it again just a little bit, like say, at three, negative three or negative 2.8. So now what we want to do is advance one frame. And we're going to pull that a little bit past zero again, but we want it to be at, like say, two and a half. Advance another frame, and we're going to move it to negative two. It is so hard to get that to move. That's why it's always important to use the arrows if you can't just do it with your hand. Another frame, we're going to move it again to a right around two. Another frame, and we're gonna drag it back to negative two in that area. Advance another frame, and we are going to, once again, pull it a little past zero, maybe at the one factor, and we're going to leave it there for now. Let's just back out and see how this looks so far. Okay, that looks good. So what I'm going to do is put the finishing touches on that and we're going to go back to frame and fit and we're going to hit the last keyframe where we left off on. And we're going to advance three frames, maybe four, four frames. Now what we want to do is, right now it's on one. I just want to bring that a little past the negative mark I say to about negative 1.1, advance it another frame, and now we're going to bring it perfectly back to zero, right in the middle from where we started. Okay, so let's jump out and see how this looks. Okay, that looks great. So what I wanna do is make two duplicates of this first title. Stack them right on top of one another. If you're ever having problems with LumaFusion and you see that gold rectangle pop around your title, go ahead and reboot LumaFusion. Okay, now we should be able to do it. I don't know why that happens sometimes, but if you ever have that problem where you're, something is just not moving it where you want it to go, just quickly close it out and reboot it. Okay, so let's go to the middle title. We'll double click on that. Now what I wanna do is change the color of this to green. And once again, I'm going to pull down the opacity of this. I'll say down to about 40%. Now I also wanna make this a little bigger, but I'm not going to do that by increasing the size here. I want to widen it. So we're going to do that by increasing that by the X factor. That looks good, so let's back out of that. Now we're going to go to the topmost title, and what we're going to do is change this color to red. Once again, we're going to pull down the opacity of that, right around to 50%. I also want to change the size of this on the X scale as well and a touch on the Y as well, but not too big. Okay, so let's see how this looks so far. Okay, so now what we wanna do is we only want that white title to show before the movement starts. So we'll go ahead and drag it frame by frame until we see the movement begin, and then we'll just cut away the very beginnings of the colored title bars. Okay, and once again, as soon as these begin to end, we're also going to 
cut away the colors. Maybe right here I will cut away the red. And right here I will cut away the green. Okay, so what I want to do is, remember that very first title we duplicated? Let's go ahead and drop that right on top. Okay, so what I want to do is double click on that title, go to frame and fit. Now we're going to go to blending. So what I want to do here is, right at the last keyframe, we're going to change the opacity of this all the way down to where it's barely, just barely visible. I would say at least 12%. Now let's pull this up to where we're seeing all that motion just beginning to, to halt and come to an end. Right about there, we're going to drop another keyframe, going to advance a frame, and now we're going to pull the opacity up to that 100% line. Okay, now that we've done all of our hard work, we definitely want to save all of this motion as a preset. So let's go ahead and double click on that main title bar. Let's go back to frame and fit. So what we wanna do now is go to this star that has a plus sign in it. We tap on that. That is going to bring up the save motion preset window. So go ahead and name this preset, whatever it is that you wanna call it, glitch effect, fast. And then you just hit the star with the plus again, and now that all of that motion and action that you've already keyed in here will be saved under your preset. Now, if you ever want to get to that again, you want to apply that to a different text or a different title in a different video, or even later on in this particular video, all you'd have to do is go up and tap the star icon. And this is where all of your different effects that you've saved are going to be stored. You pick the one that you want and it will automatically apply that to your title. Well, I thank you so much for joining me and until next time, wear your sunblock.